Hey everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland, the place to get the inside scoop on Icelandic nature, history, culture, and language. My name is Jules, and today is dedicated to indulgence, and in particular, indulgent winter celebrations in Iceland that you've probably never heard of. So I'm not talking about Christmas and I'm not talking about New Year's Day, which definitely are a time of indulgence here, but this comes afterwards, during a time period when there doesn't seem to be a lot going on, particularly in like a lot of Western cultures, besides maybe like Valentine's Day. But Icelanders have kind of mixed it up to be really fascinating during this time. And in particular, I'll just start with the first of the many different celebrations, which happens in the month of Thorre. And so Thorre is a month on the old Icelandic calendar. And there's a little bit of a debate as to whether the month Thorre is named after the thunder god Thor or a Norwegian king named Thorre. Regardless of that, there is a month in the old Icelandic calendar named Thorre. And the kickoff day for Thorre is Bondatagur, which in direct translation is Farmer's Day, but over time, Bonte, which means farmer, has also become a bit synonymous with husband. So Husband's Day is the kickoff for Thorre, and it's always on a Friday between the 19th and 26th of January. So what's interesting about this day, and, what, and the head of the household, which of course back in the day was always a man, had to wake up earlier than anyone else on Bonte Dagur, and only have on a t-shirt, partly so only like one leg in their pants, or they're like kind of just like dragging along bare and barefoot, and go outside and walk a ring around the house while also having their underwear on the leg that doesn't have the pants dragging <laughs> too, in order to welcome Thorre into their house. And on Bondadagur, the lady of the house is supposed to treat her husband. So basically, probably like giving them a really nice meal, doing things that they really like, or whatever, you know, just treat them like a king. In essence, the husbands get spoiled on that day. And that's just the kickoff of Thorre and this indulgence because during the month of Thorre, there are these winter feasts called Thorrablot. And in essence, people, modern day people, get together and eat the foods that their ancestors used to eat. And back in, you know, centuries past, eating these traditional foods was out of necessity. It was more like they had pickled, they had salted, they, you know, preserved food, fermented in all these different ways, and they needed this food to get through winter. Whereas modern day, it's like you're drinking alcohol, like brennevin, which you're gonna need if you're gonna have shark and whatever else, but you're eating sheep's head, you're eating hangikyut, soured ram's testicles, fermented shark, all of these different types of traditional foods that many tourists actually come and try because they want to get a chance to be able to taste what it was like for Icelanders back in the day to eat. And of course like flatkökur, which is a flatbread and things of that nature. So there are major feasts that happen. In essence, they're just really big indulgent parties in which people eat these things, laugh, have a good time, and enjoy themselves because it's winter and it's dark in Iceland and it's nice to get together and be able to have an indulgent celebration. And in regards to a Thorrablot, I've actually never been to a normal Thorrablot, meaning like the traditional ones. I've been to a vegan block, which is basically a vegan version of this. They don't make like, you know, a vegan looking lamb's head or anything of that nature, but they do still have like this grand feast and it's in the winter time and I really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping that it will happen again. It didn't happen this year, of course, because of COVID, but in the future, I'm hoping that's the case. Because I like to party too and, and enjoy some indulgent times during the long, dark winters. And of course, since there is a husband's day, there is also a women's or wife's day called Kwondagr, but this takes place in a different month. So the following month after Thorre is a month in the old Icelandic calendar called Goa. And this happens usually on a Sunday between February 18th and 24th. And this is to celebrate the arrival of spring. I say spring because in Iceland, it's in essence so winter, but 
What spring is more like for Icelanders is the fact that the days are getting much longer. Not necessarily that they're like plants popping up. <laughs> and what women have to do on this day is get up early and go out to recite this poem. Velkomin siertu góa mín og gaktu í bæin. Vertu ekki úti í vindunum vor langan daginn. And of course, just as the men had been pampered on Husband's Day, the women will also be pampered on this day. So that indulgence can mean so many different things, especially in modern times and what different individuals like to have in order to be pampered. And if so far you're enjoying the information I'm sharing in this video, make sure that you subscribe and you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on other fascinating videos that I have coming out in the future. And next up is a trio of days I think is so much fun and the indulgence just like kicks it up a few notches because this is supposed to be the days right before Lent starts. So you know that indulgence is like in hyperdrive here in Iceland. <laughs> even though a lot of people are not Christian or might not actually even observe Lent, they still keep these holidays going because they're fun and you'll see why. I think you would also want to take part in these once you hear about them. So the first of them is always the Monday before Ash Wednesday and it's called Boludagur. And Boludagur was adopted here in Iceland in the 19th century and it's thought that it was either adopted from Norway or from Denmark. But it doesn't matter because the tradition is definitely going strong here. And Boludagur means buns day. And they're in particular cream buns, these pastries that I'm talking about, they're so good. <laughs> and what I love about this holiday is that it's so whimsical and kind of funny because little kids do an act to their parents that most people would be like, what? <laughs> in order to be awarded with cream buns. So in essence, children, they make wands and they have like a little piece of paper, well Gunnar at least did this when he was younger, had a little piece of paper on his wand that said bola, which means bun. And they use those wands to smack the butts of their parents on boladagur. And they say like bola, 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 which is like bun, 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 bun. And the amount of times that they smack their parents' butt equates to the amount of buns they can get to eat. <laughs> so there are like a ridiculous amount of cream buns eaten on this day. Of course, adults eat them as well, but they're not going around smacking people's butts. Maybe if they're not, you know, their significant other or something. I mean, I don't recommend going around smacking just anybody's butt if you're an adult, of course. But on this day, kids for sure are able to do that. And oh man, the amount of variety of these cream buns is intense. I did a taste test of five different vegan cream buns of, of Bollur and I put it on my Instagram. If you want to go check it out, uh, it will be in the highlights on my, my profile. I did and I, I, of course, chose a winner of the ones that I think taste the best, and you can find that out. But there are like a ridiculous amount of buns that are vegan and not vegan, so lots to choose from. And they're only sold during this time of the year because it's for this particular celebration. So if you ever want to try it in Iceland, I recommend coming before Lent because these days that I'm talking about are just so much fun. They're a little intense because of the amount of eating. Like I ate five buns in a row and definitely felt a little sick, but, I, but it was worth it. I mean, it was totally worth it, in my opinion. Just put that out there. Just be cautious about how many buns you eat because it'll, it'll get to you later. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, which many of us might know as Fat Tuesday, I feel like Icelanders took it literally because they named the day Sprinkidagur, which is like blast day or burst day. And essentially they make a soup, a bean soup with like vegetables and other things in it. And also they have salted meat that they eat on this day until they feel like they're going to burst. Intense. And I did make, of course, a vegan version of this and I bought some salted meat <laughs> hunky kit from Vegan Buddha, which is a vegan store here in order to make a meal for Gunnar and I to enjoy. But of course there are traditionally, it's not a vegan meal at all, but that's okay. Everyone does their own version of it. And we definitely ate until we felt like we were going to burst. But again, 
worth it. And for the last of these three days, I have to do a little bit of a wardrobe change. So I'll do that now. So the last of these three days is called Oskodagur, which is Ash Wednesday. And what's interesting about this and why I'm wearing this setup is because it is a day where kids dress up in costumes and they go around the different places and sing in order to get granted with some candy. So they kind of have to earn their candy. And if you want to see my little thing here, I don't have a song to sing, but <laughs> I at least like, you know, wanted to wear something. And I know this is more Christmassy, but doesn't matter. It's a costume, okay, people? And just having some fun. Of course, there are also people who go and get like their ashes on their forehead and stuff like that. But there's other fun things that happen in Iceland on Ash Wednesday than just going to church and getting ashes on your forehead. As you can tell, lots of fun happening <laughs> uh, during winter here in terms of indulgent celebrations. I think it's so much fun. I really enjoy it because it makes the long dark nights not seem so long and it's always just something to look forward to and so that pretty much is what leads up to Lent and of course there's Easter that comes later but I'm gonna do a totally separate video for Easter because it's another indulgent holiday <laughs> but it's more of in the you know Icelandic spring so we'll leave it there but if you've enjoyed learning about these indulgent winter celebrations in Iceland, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with anyone that you think would find it interesting. And I'm pretty active on Instagram. I do like a weekly Icelandic news roundup and different topics throughout the week. So feel free to follow me over there in order to keep up on all things Iceland. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.